today from Jackson College, <coughs> Professor of Biology and Chemistry, Dr. Matthew Badke. Hi, Matt. Good to be back. Good morning. Got a little, morning. little cough in my throat there. Mm -hmm. Did you notice cough. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a regular cough, nothing, yeah. nothing of note. Mm -hmm. Tickle. Mm -hmm. Nothing we do, crazy. Uh, we do a lot of uh, video editing here. We do. Yes. But today we're going to talk about uh, gene editing. This I did want to talk about this that. This is interesting. Yeah. 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 So there's a little bit of a background, I think, in order for, for this to kind of make sense. And so stick with me for a second. It, it, will, it will all come together here. But um, you may or may not know that there are viruses that infect bacteria, only bacteria. They're called bacteriophage. And for years and years and years, people thought that bacteria were sort of these simple things that just sort of go through and do their thing. But in probably about the, the mid to late 1990s, some researchers started to identify that there were these sequences that they found in bacterial genomes. And they saw them all over the place. And they were repeated everywhere. And they couldn't really figure out what was going on and what was happening. And it turns out, as research does, uh, we sort you know the term we use is standing on the shoulders of giants. We're always taking all the research that was done and, and building on that, and that's exactly what happened. People started to look into this further, and they realized that there's actually this really, really fascinating bacterial immune system that exists where bacteria have the ability to if they're infected with a bacteriophage, they actually take a little snippet of the genetic material from that bacteriophage and stick it into their own genome. And so when that bacteriophage tries to come back and reinfect the cell, they've seen it before, and they basically make a copy of that piece of genetic material, and it kills the bacteriophage, not able to cause an infection again. So it's sort of an early version of, of an immune system, which is really amazing. Nobody knew that this even existed. And so, okay, you know, that's, that's really cool biology um, and really neat to learn about bacteria. But then people took it a step further and they started thinking, you know, what, what is actually happening here? And what they found is that bacteria have an enzyme that is able to do this process that's able to actually take a copy of the genetic material from the bacteriophage and insert it into that. People continued to do more work, and this is probably moving into probably about 2010, somewhere around there. So this is not old, this is not old stuff. This is probably 10, 15 years ago we're talking. People started to realize that this was sort of an, an independent system that you could actually take this enzyme and put it into any bacteria, and it would do this process. And then people continued to, to work with it more, and they realized that you could actually have it put any sequence you wanted in there. That as long as you introduce the proper genetic material in whatever sequence you wanted, this enzyme, and it's called Cas9, would be able to do this. And so people started thinking, well, what if we actually did this in human cells? What if we actually had this enzyme go in and edit a piece of human DNA? And they realized that, sure enough, it could do this. That if you introduce this enzyme and you sort of told it what sequence you wanted to put in there, that this would be able to do this. And so this is what is now called CRISPR-Cas9. Um, I'm not going to go through what CRISPR stands for because it's a lot of very complicated words, but it's basically the ability to edit DNA. Hmm. So this Cas9 enzyme will cut out and put in whatever sequence you want. And so it is really amazing, and that was really exciting. And, and two researchers, uh, one woman from the US and one from France, won the Nobel Prize in 2020 for this technology and for realizing that uh, we have the ability to edit DNA using this system. So that's cool. Uh, and of course, then several companies have come in and they said, well, what if we use this as a treatment to actually cure genetic diseases? Um, and that has sort of taken us up to December of last year uh, when the first gene therapy treatment using this CRISPR-Cas9 system was approved by the FDA. Um, and it was uh, for a company called uh, Vertex uh, Pharmaceuticals. 
and it is a process that uh, helps people that have sickle cell anemia. So what it does, it, it basically, it's a little more, it's, it's complicated, of course, just like everything in biology. Uh, but basically, there's two forms of, of a hemoglobin, and hemoglobin is the protein that takes oxygen and distributes it throughout your body. People that have sickle cell have a mutation in that hemoglobin, and it causes them to basically bunch up and, and form clumps, and it's incredibly painful. People have these episodes of very, very high pain. It's, it's very debilitating. And uh, what this treatment does is it actually so the, the adult hemoglobin doesn't work anymore. But early on in the development, when we're fetus, we have fetal hemoglobin, a sort of a different version of hemoglobin. And that gets turned off as we get older and then we have our adult hemoglobin. What this new treatment does is it actually, uh, so the, the basically the switch, the genetic switch that turns off the fetal hemoglobin, it turns it back on. And so, what you do is you basically take out your own cells, which is really fascinating. So you remove your own cells and do this treatment on them to basically turn on the ability to make the fetal hemoglobin again. And then you put the cells back into a person. And uh, 29 out of the 30 people that they've done this with have basically do not have those episodes anymore. They've basically been cured of uh, sickle cell. Wow. from this technology. So obviously a long way to go. We're talking about very low numbers, uh, this sort of treatment. You know, that they haven't said what this would actually cost, but estimates are probably somewhere on the order of $2 million uh, because it's so labor intensive. Wow. $2 million per person? Yeah. So they've got some I work can. to do. They've, uh, they've got some work to do. Maybe my insurance will cover uh, probably, that. Probably, probably not. Doctor, what is a sickle cell? What, what does that mean? You've, we've heard that, you know. Again, it's that's right. another one of those playground words, sickle cell anemia. You didn't call your friends that? No. <laughs> what is it's it? A, it's a, the, so you have a mutation in that hemoglobin protein, and sickle cells in normal, normal hemoglobin, uh, it, when it's mutated, the red blood cells, instead of being that nice round shape, form all kinds of weird, odd shapes. They get curved and they get sort of compressed. And, and like I was saying, that's why, if you think about your cells flowing through your vessels, right, when you've got all these odd shaped clumps and things like that, it, they're not able to move through your vessels as easily then. So people have lots of problems, like I said, with pain. Their red blood cells don't last as long, so they end up with anemia. Um, so lots of lots of issues uh, with that, and so um, not only is this exciting for people with sickle cell for the potential of what might come, but this is sort of a proof of concept for this idea that we can use this CRISPR-Cas9 system to be able to edit people's cells, and basically, you know, this idea of somebody being cured from a genetic disease is really something that nobody would have thought possible 20 years ago probably um, and, and we're sort of on the cusp of potentially being able to expand this now with many other diseases as well so Amazing. very very exciting Amazing. hundreds hundreds of genetic diseases yeah. probably thousands I mean, presumably anything that there was a mutation that could be identified you would have the potential to go through and, and treat that hmm. with this process wow. Yeah, I had heard about CRISPR. I had no idea what it meant, and mm -hmm. uh, now I do. Thanks for the uh, yeah. explanation. Yeah, thank yeah. you, doctor. And the good news. It sounds like there's more and more, maybe as this gets developed, the price hopefully will come down. It's just like everything else, you know, as, as you get more efficient and things like that, yeah. Dr. Matthew Badke with us today from Jackson College. We have an award winner joining us next. Stay tuned.